Can we just get his attention, Carl? Can we just grab you? Yeah, certainly. Sorry about <laughs> attention. Um, pretty heated press conference. We expected nothing less. A couple of things George said, which we'll just start with. He said, round one to him, he didn't want to take this fight. What would you say to that? Um, I didn't hear him. You know, obviously, whatever he says, he's, he's trying to antagonise me. He's trying to, trying to get under my skin and provoke a response to then end in an argument. So I'm not going to have it for you either. <laughs> so it's pointless me answering that. I'm just going to be just relaxed and be myself and do what I need to do. He's talking about winning round one. The fight don't start until May 31st, so he can think he's won whatever mind game or whatever silly argument he's trying to get into there on the press conference. I'm paying no attention to his, his stupidness because I paid too much attention to that in the first fight, to the build-up. And mentally, I wasn't at the races. And that was my own fault. I made a mistake and I won't be making the same mistake again. So as far as him asking me silly questions about winning round one in the press or whatever he said, I didn't know what he said. Um, it's just irrelevant. I, I'm not interested. I was going to ask you about that. You said mentally you weren't at the races for the first fight because you know, it's hard to take somebody seriously that hadn't fought a top fighter. Yeah, exactly. Do you think that's what it was? You underestimated him? I did underestimate him because you know, I've got everybody telling me this kid shouldn't be in the same ring as you. He's not boxed anybody ranked in the top 15 in the world. The only person he has boxed in the top 15 in the world is me. And let's not forget, he lost that part. Um, regardless of what you think about the controversial stoppage, which it was controversial, that's the reason we're here. But for me to, to get up for fighting George Groves and be really switched on mentally, I would have needed a psychologist or I needed a hypnosis or something because it's human nature. If I'm sparring with somebody who's, who's an amateur or who's, who's not experienced, I take the time with them. I, I, I let my guard down a bit, I relax, and you get caught with silly shots. Um, I did that against George Groves. I, t I took my half the ball, I, you know, mentally I wasn't switched on, I wasn't focused, and I almost paid dearly. You know, I got put down in round one, and I got hit with everything but the kitchen sink for the next five rounds. But I still found a way to win, and that's what's important. So it's clear from what you're saying that you're not going to announce the win this time, you're going to be fully up. Yeah. Well, I've been there, seen it, I've done it where George yeah. Rose is concerned. I've had all the, the earache and the, you know, the antagonistic jibes and the digs and trying to get under my skin. I've had it, I'm not going to have it again. You know, we're going over all ground then, so it's time for me to concentrate on myself and focus about being mentally and physically prepared, sorry, in the best place possible. And that's where I'm going to be. Um, physically, I'm always in great shape. You know, I'm known as being the Iron Man, running, swimming, cycling. I don't leave any stone unturned where the physical side of things is concerned. But if your mind's not quite focused, you're not switched on, mentally, especially you know, in the last two, three hours before the fight, then you underperform. It's as simple as that. That's what happens. And I underperformed against George Groves in the first fight and I almost paid dearly. You talk about the jibes and the getting under the skin. We saw in both of your fights with Mikel Kessler that there was real mutual respect between yeah. the two. It was really nice and refreshing yeah. to see. In the build up to this first fight, there was an obvious needle and an obvious animosity there. Would you prefer it if there was a bit of mutual respect, or do you enjoy that needle? Do you enjoy that animosity? Well, I, I think I've proven that when, when it's not very good, I mean, I boxed Andre Durrell in the first fight of the Super Six tournament. Um, four years ago and I didn't like him. He was very sort of arrogant and disrespectful towards me. He was from Philadelphia in America and he, he came with this, this street attitude and this couldn't care less sort of credibility around him and I didn't like it and he was it was horrible to be around and uh, he wind me up. And again in that fight I was reaching in, trying to land big shots, forcing my work, making mistakes. And I got the I got the win, I got the points win. I did what I had to do to win because he spent most of the most of the night on his bike running and holding. But it was a bad performance. So to answer that question, I probably prefer things to be how they are now. And I'm cool. I'm relaxed. I'm enjoying being back in the gym. I'm enjoying my boxing. And I'm ignoring Mr. Idiot Boy and all his all his rubbish. I'm just ignoring it. It's going straight over my head. I've heard it all before. If I'm him already, I'm not going to listen to it twice. And I'm certainly not going to make the same mistake twice. Is the, the key then for you, from what you're saying, the key then for you is physically you know you can do this. Mm. You've been doing it for no, years definitely. and years and years. The key is mentally you need to be up for this and mentally you need to not let him get to you. 100% in any sport for any athlete. Mental, the mental game. As long as you're fit and strong and you know, all, all of a all of the elements of it are equal, which they usually are at top level. You're both quick, you both can punch hard, you both know how to box, you both you know, you know, 
never believe in yourself, but mentally it's, it's that attitude and that mindset right before the ring walk, getting into the ring and having a game plan. You can execute by concentrating. And when I boxed him last time, I wasn't concentrating, I wasn't thinking. I was looking at his chin and thinking, I've got to land this shot on his chin. And that's not boxing, that's fighting. There's a reason it's called boxing. I box behind the jab like I do against Mikel Kessler. And then, you know, counter punch, look for openings. It's a game of chess. Let your, let your opponent unfold in front of you. Take him into late rounds if you have to. Which is probably what I might have to do for this fight. I might have to, you know, get him into late rounds again. But not get caught with stupid shots, get him in there. So, I know what I've got to do. My coach, Rob McCracker, knows what we've got to do. And um, I'm paying no attention to his rubbish, because that's what it is, rubbish. George was seeing it as another sort of feather in his cup that the fight was in his home time, as he said. But it was clear from, from what you said that you're just really excited about fighting at Wembley. We're hearing that 20,000 tickets were sold in the first eight minutes of tickets. Yeah, it's so. amazing. I mean, I would have loved to have boxed at my home, you know, Nottingham at the city ground. It would have been fantastic because I was born and raised in Nottingham. I went to school in Nottingham. All my friends, family, everybody who's anybody who knows me is in Nottingham. So for me, from a, a point of prestige for me and, and home value, I would have rather brought all the business and had everything in Nottingham for the city, for my city, for me, for my fans. But, you know, you've got to look at the magnitude of this fight and what the event's going to mean in history. And, you know, potentially my legacy, well, it will hinge on this fight because you're only as good as your last fight. And you're only remembered for how you finished your career rather than how you, what a wonderful career you had all the way through. A lot of people look at Roy Jones Jr. and think he got knocked out by Antonio Tarver and Glenn Johnson. And, you know, it's a shame. And, and people look at Mike Tyson, who was, in my opinion, the best fighting machine ever. But they look at him getting, him getting done late on in his career and the knockout to, to Buster Douglas when he wasn't right. Um, and that's how they're remembered, and it's, it's wrong, but that's boxing. So this is so, so important for me to get it right in this rematch. Um, but getting it right on this big stage, on a stage this big, if you get it wrong, it's bad. So there's a lot of pressure there being put on myself, or naturally being put on me, because it's a Wembley. But I prefer it to be at a big stadium, because this is history in the making. And, and very, very few fighters get the opportunity to make history in their boxing career and fight in an outdoor stadium. You can probably name five fights on, on, on your hand, and you know you fin you run out, you run out of names that have boxed in an outdoor event for boxing because boxing doesn't demand that kind of following. It doesn't demand that kind of you know respect from the public, if you like. Where a football ground will get filled every weekend. Week in, week out. And boxing, it's indoors, it's usually small hall. So to come to a stadium, a stadium like Wembley Stadium for me, it, it just eclipses anything I could have possibly done. So it's going to be, it's going to be something. Carl, thank you very much for your time. It's bound to be a cracky night, May the 31st. The mind games have already started. Mr. Froch, pretty cool, calm and collected about it all. We'll be speaking to George Groves later and uh, hearing what he has to say about the big fight back here, Wembley Stadium, on May the 31st. How's it going? Cheers, Carl. Thanks very much.